My friend, you are just now overviewing Kakamega Rainforest in Western Kenya, one of the smallest rainforests in the world and a paradise for birds, monkeys, butterflies and other animals and plants. But there is a big problem. The forest is under hard pressure from the fast-growing population around it. The forest is struggling to survive. The area is today only about 240 square kilometers and it's shrinking. These dancers live just outside Kakamega rainforest. They belong to the Tiriki clan of the Luya people and they have joined the fight to save the forest. This tribal dance is very old but has been adapted to modern times. The chainsaw represents modern threats to the forest. This film is about Kakamega rainforest, but also about the struggling done by locals through grassroots organizations to save the forest. The largest organization is KEEP, Kakamega Environmental Education Program. We return to KEEP later in the film. First, the forest. Kakamega rainforest is a small fragment from the old Congo Basin rainforest, which once reached over Africa from east to west. Kakamega forest lies north of Lake Victoria, just below the Nandi Mountains and Mount Elgin. From the lake, moist winds blow northeast. The winds rise at the mountains and leave rain over the forest. The water flows back in rivers to Lake Victoria. Since more than 100 years, Kakamega rainforest is overexploited by commercial interests like timber logging and charcoaling, but also by domestic needs like harvesting of firewood and medical plants and also by clearings for new fields. The forest is fragmented into islands, soon too small for many of the wild animals and plants to survive in. The large-scale commercial overexploitation is eased by government bans on timber logging and charcoaling. But the domestic overuse rapidly grows, and illegal logging and charcoaling still wear and tear on the forest. Some scientists fear that the forest will collapse totally during the next 50 years. Uh, to see different species of birds in the forest. The reason why we are seeing these different people is that we have some of, uh, some of the birds that are very unique to this forest. In fact, uh, they are being called um, some of the Kakamega special. You'll never find it anywhere else as, except in Kakamega forest. Or you can also find it somewhere else, but not as easy in Kakamega Forest. One of these examples of the birds is the Great Blue Turaco. You get that it can be found somewhere else in this part of the uh, of the uh, of the country, but in Kakamega, it say that it's easily found. Although sometimes we feel you can go uh, for a full day without seeing it, but in some places you can go. Uh, maybe for a year before seeing the bird. But in Kakamega you need to search it for about a day or maybe one and a half a day and you see it. Another species that's very endemic to this forest is the uh, blue-headed bee eater. This is a bird that has been only recorded in Kakamega forest, although it's said that sometimes being found in Kibale forest. That's a forest in, uh, in Uganda.
Kakamega Rainforest is managed by Kenya Forest Service together with Kenya Wildlife Service. The main entrance is at Isisheno Forest Station. Here the organization KEEP has its office and resource center. KEEP, among other things, organizes the forest guides. The well-educated guides help tourists, researchers and students to tour the forest. They tell about the forest and find the species the visitors are most interested in. The trees uh, here in the forest can attain even 40 meters high, uh, produces very big seeds. And these seeds are ever dropping down. The old way of teaching how the local people here, we have been training people, they will say uh, maybe to uh, make people not to plant such kind of tree closer to houses, they could come up with the taboos. These taboos were just to make people not to make mistakes because the seeds are big and are ever dropping. If it is very closer to the house, a seed may harm someone there. <laughs> Here also are tourist facilities like a guest house and several huts where visitors could stay overnight in the forest. Groups of monkeys live near the huts, so there is a mutual interest in watching. A very big one. <laughs> At the forest entrance is also a gift shop and possibilities for visitors to buy refreshments and a good meal. Several trails lead into the dense forest and make it easy to reach the points of interest. On the edge between the forest and one of the natural glades is a canopy tower from which visitors could view a large area. During Keep's time of managing the tourist activities, the amount of visitors have risen from under 1,000 a year to about 10,000 a year. How mm -hmm. many butterflies from the forest? Yeah, with butterflies you have lots of and lots of butterflies. We have over 440 different species of butterflies. Mm -hmm. And you get that uh, with butterflies it's not easily identified. You need to, it's not like a bird, you need to trap it mm. and then take it somewhere else where you have to start identifying but yeah. you can just see it and then you identify it. 